Okay, so first let's look at some of the tools. Mine are a little bit soapy because I've been cutting some soap. Um, this has been talked about. You can get this on Amazon. It has a beveler and a planer on it. Um, it's adjustable this way. And you would use knife or something and chop. I don't like this very much um, unless I'm doing very small batches of soap. Um, because it's a little bit tedious. This particular model, the one you get on Amazon, I think is horrible because these don't screw down very easily. Um, I think it can be fixed if you put better washers on the bottom. On mine, the way the blade adjusts in here, um, I think one of the screw holes came stripped, so that's not very good either. So I don't use this except for in rare instances, like what we're gonna do here with cutting the soap, which is gonna be really fun. Big surprise coming up. Okay, so we will use this, but it's not my favorite. <clears throat> my next upgrade, because I used to just do everything by hand with this, is a $5 cheese cutter. I love this thing. You'll see here, I took an old strip of measuring tape, glued it down, and I just used some, um, I think I just used some wood glue and glued that down. And I can do simple measurements. You can see here, I tried to write on it with Sharpie before. That never worked. It always washed off. Um, but yeah, so this works really well. I can quickly see and just chop and slice. So again, most of the stuff I do for the fun, kind of small batch things I do. Um, for production, like let's say I was going to make... Um, some of the batches I make are about 90 bars at a time. Um, doing anything like these is going to be uh, very time consuming, not very efficient. So I got this off of Etsy and it's a log splitter. You can turn to loosen your wire here and then it has these um, removable steps. You just put your wire at whatever step. These are the most common measurements I use. I have some tape that I replace every once in a while so I can easily see what's what. And my table's down here lower, but it has a lip. Oh, just down so you can see it has a lip. So when you push, it doesn't slide around. I love this. I did use this for some of the embeds on the soap. Um, and let's kind of talk about that real quick and what I did with the soap. Uh, I forgot one thing, so I'm going to pause and be right back. Okay, and we're back. All right, so this soap has some embeds. These embeds were created using pipes. This is a half inch pipe. This is a one inch pipe. I was very, very nervous about using these pipes because as you can see, they're very small. It worked splendidly though. What I did was I did a very steep water, what you guys call a water discount. I measure all water as a ratio and I've been soaping it one to one. Uh, I made the soap yesterday. I technically could have cut it yesterday as well, but I wanted to show you. It's gonna be really fun, just wait to see. Um, so I'm waiting for today. Anyway, what I did, I lined this with freezer paper. It was very difficult. I had to roll up the freezer paper with a pencil, then push it in. Then I just put freezer paper and a rubber band on the bottom. Had all my pipes kind of rubber banded together, put in jars to keep steady. And then I just put a funnel. I have a stainless steel funnel that I poured them with. So that worked really well. I did have to freeze them to get them out. Um, but with the freezer paper and everything, it came out great. So I'm going to put these aside. Now you're probably wondering why the heck did I need to make so much soap and itty bitty small pipes. And here you are, ready? Because I wanted to make panda bear soap. Yes, it's for my adult kids um, for their Christmas present. All right, so what I did, let's look at this real quick. 
These, this is one one inch pipe and I cut it in half. Same here. This is a one inch pipe and I quartered this. These were the half inch pipes. So I did two for one for each eye. I tried you scooping out the, um, the pupil here on them. It did not work very well. Um, so there's one eye that has it done. I made two lobes of these. <clears throat> and the other one, they're just all solid. There were a couple things that didn't go very well in my design, but overall I'm thrilled with it. Super cute, so. Um, okay, so let's, oh, and one thing I wanted to say is I used this to slice these because they were, you know, it's a long bit of soap. So this was handy. I just set it to a half inch and slid it down to slice it. So let's see how everything turned out. Let's unmold this and then we'll cut it and we'll talk a little more about soap cutting. I'm going to adjust the camera so you can see my workspace here. We'll get this out of the way. Okay. You ready? I've already seen this, so it's but it's super cute. Okay, ready? And there we have panda bear soap. I was just so thrilled when I first saw this. Now these are the ends, so let's get to cleaning this up and look at some of our soap cutting tools. Um, here I can mention this one thing about this mold. Can you see how this kind of bubbles out right here? You get a, a lump on that end. So this is always a scrap piece. <clears throat> it's not in the mold the liner. I think it's in the box. Something about this. But I haven't been able to figure it out, so I just trim it off. <clears throat> so a couple things I do here. I'm going to... And I just use a knife and I'm just going to kind of clean up where the ears, because I want them popping out. So I'm just going to slice this up here. Um, yeah, but this is how I trim up and clean up soap. Sometimes instead of a paring knife, I am using a potato peeler, uh, but it doesn't get much fancier than that for me. Like I said, I don't like how the beveler works. Okay, so those are kind of cleaned up. So now you can see we have a nice, okay, uh, connection between the ears. So you can see they poke in there. Okay. So I could just start slicing, slicing, slicing. But one thing to mention about wires is they can leave bumps or dots. Some people confuse them with steric spots on their soap. Um, but really it's kind of like drag marks. Maybe if you had air bubbles in your soap, you'll still see those. Um, so if, and I, I usually don't care about those, but if it's something that I would care about, like, like this, um, I'm going to use my, my metal, this is a stainless steel, um, pastry blade. Um, when you use this to cut soap, you're going to basically, as you push down, fill in all those air bubbles with other soap drags. Um, so you come up with a smoother looking bar than if you were to use a wire. Uh, this wire on the cheese slicer uh, seems to, I don't know, be smoother than the one on my log splitter. So I don't get as many bubbly marks, but I still get some. And this is all my scrap soap. I thought we would cut it at the same time so we can see the difference. So I'm just going to do a quick slice of this. Cut the end piece off. So can you see kind of this bubbling? These bubbly specks going on in here. It doesn't look bad. There's nothing wrong with it, but I don't want those to end up in my pandas. So 
and I'll post some pictures. I know the lighting in here probably isn't the best, but I'll post some pictures in the light box so you can see some of these differences as well. Um, let's go ahead. See, so you're supposed to be able to move this, hold and measure wherever you want. I just know from here to here is an inch. So I line this up with the first one and then I hold. See, I'm holding. I'm going to line this up flush with the end here. I'm not worrying about this. And I'll hold it. And then the trick here is when you're cutting, see this is a wide, lots of play here. You want to push your knife against either the front, so keep it flush here when you're pushing, or keep it flush here, whichever way you're cutting your soap. So use the blocks as a guide. If your soap is taller than the frame here, it your that first cut's going to be a little off, but just try and keep your blade pressed up against whichever side of the block you're cutting on. Okay, so with this soap, oh, that's kind of fun, um, we're seeing a smoother surface here than we did with the wire cutter here. I'm going to cut another one with the wire cutter that'll have these embeds in there so we can have a clear picture of the difference between the two. So that is cut with the wire cutter. That is cut with the, um, with the blade. So I'll set those aside. That's kind of a fun soap there. These are just all the scrap pieces from the pandas. Okay, now let's cut the pandas. So what we're gonna do I'm going to trim off this edge here, and notice how I put it in here. I'm holding it back up against. I'm just going to trim off this end here. So I will use this. Slice this down. <laughs> Look at that. And that just so cute. Okay, so here we go with our first cut of panda soup. And there we go. Happy panda soup. First I off, I scented it with eucalyptus and spearmint essential oil. Move the camera up so I can see a little bit. The ears, eyes, nose, and paws, I colored with some annatto, indigo, and black charcoal to get a nice black that wouldn't bleed and that would be really black. So i really big into color blending. The bottom here, um, I'm hoping will fade to a lighter green. Um, it is made with um, Brazil wood from Ann George and some indigo in the lye water and it made a great green it's looking pretty dark here on some of my other test batches with it it came out lighter so hopefully that'll come out lighter but I think it looks like the panda his little paws are hanging out on some grass or maybe some bamboo leaves and you see his little paws and super cute so some of the inconsistencies and things I didn't like about this design when, when I cut it, granted, super cute, love the soap, um, but I didn't get these embeds as straight as I wanted. Let me show you the other loaf, and you'll see what I mean here. This one's crooked, again, not the end of the world. Here you'll see where I tried to carve the pupil, did not go well. Um, this one actually came out a lot better, but you can see between the two of them, a little bit of crooked noses. This one here um, that I have yet to cut, um, he's 
kind of a, looks a little like a crazed panda with his eyes uneven. This one is um, much more symmetrical, came out much better. And if I was to do this again, I would bring the base that I was layering in to trace, much a thicker trace um, before I put the embeds in. I brought it to about a medium trace, poured, then I let it sit 15 minutes, then I put these little guys on, the paws, then I brought it to a medium trace, poured until I just covered them, and thought it was at a thick enough trace, dropped the nose in, then I did the same thing, traced my portion of my batter, poured it, put in the embeds, traced a portion of my batter, poured it, um, put in the embeds. I did wait for about 10 minutes before putting the embeds. So this soap took quite a long time to pour, um, and it was poured in multiple days because of the embeds. Um, but again, super cute. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed looking at my Panda Bear soap with me. I'm going to cut the rest of them, and I hope some of this helped you um, decide how you're going to cut your soap. Okay, bye everyone.